Hey guys, Crypto Dad here. In this video, we're going to continue with our installation of Debian 8.8 .8 on an internal solid state drive that's going to be encrypted with a bootable flash drive, which we'll eventually use for our key disk. So let's dive in. Okay, so in the last video, I went through all of the things that we needed before we get going. I'm going to refer you back to that video. I'm not going to take up a lot of time talking. So uh, I'm going to get started on the installation and I'll fill in the gaps as we go. Now, since I can't uh, do my recording software while I'm installing an operating system, my solution is to point a camera at the screen of the laptop as we go along. So I apologize for the quality of the video. I think I did a pretty good job and this is the laptop okay and I think we are good to go gang so the first thing I'll do is turn this guy on now I have uh, both flash drives in the the uh, laptop right now the installation media and the uh, small flash drive that we're going to eventually use as our boot drive when we do Debian okay this particular laptop has a BIOS password. You may not be presented with this, but I am. So I'm going to just enter that password in. Now it booted from my uh, installation media, which is a, a 64 gigabyte extreme uh, flash drive. And uh, I went into the BIOS ahead of time and set that up so that uh, the BIOS is looking for uh, bootable media in the uh, USB drive flash uh, ports first. Okay, we choose install. We're going to go through these uh, defaults. Now it's going to configure a little bit and uh, look for all my hardware uh, before it gets start running the installation okay uh, as I mentioned in the previous video I'm using a wired connection so I'm going to use the Ethernet as my uh, network so it goes through a little bit of configuration uh, connects to the internet and we are good to go okay uh, the host name can be anything generic. I'm just going to choose Office PC. You can choose anything you want that looks generic. Domain name can be left blank. Uh, the root password, there's some debate as to whether or not you want to put the root password on there or enable the root account. I personally like to enable the root account and I'm going to put a password in here, whether a short or a long. I'm just going to put a good password. Let's just put it that way. Okay, the full name of the user, we're just going to use the word user. This is a generic machine. It's a stealth machine. We're going to let it call the user account user as well. Okay, and uh, whether or not you need a password for the user is debatable as well. I'm going to enter one. You have to enter it twice. With no mistakes. Okay, I'll choose my time zone just uh, to keep continuity when I'm using the machine. I like to see the current time. You can be stealthful and put it to a different time zone than where you're at if you want. But you can also do that with your web browser as well, uh, so people from the outside think you're somewhere else. So, now we're at the meat of the video. We're going to choose manual for our partitioning scheme because it's not, it's a little bit out of the ordinary. Okay, so we hit enter here. Okay, here are our drives. We've got our internal solid state drive, which I installed into this laptop. I took out the, uh, the factory original. This is our eight gigabyte flash drive. Uh, in the previous video, I recommended the Cruiser Fit, but I had some trouble with that. So uh, I substituted this generic eight gigabyte hard drive, but I still, my recommendation holds. I just didn't want to run out and buy another one. 
Okay, and here we go. Uh, this is our installation media, the SanDisk Extreme. That's where the uh, Debian installer is. So we're not going to touch that at all during the installation. Let's tackle this drive first. We highlight the drive, not to partition. We hit enter. Um, yes, we want to create an empty partition. Okay, and then it's free space. We highlight the free space and hit enter. And we create a new partition. And we use all of the space, so we just hit enter here as well. And this is a primary partition. We hit enter. I like to choose EX2 for this. Uh, I've had a little bit of trouble in the past with the EXT4 as for my boot drive, so we're just going to keep it simple. Um, well we can, uh, let's choose yes on this. Okay. Our mount point is going to be boot. Okay, so we're going to boot. And I like to put the bootable flag on as well. Okay, so this is our flash drive we've got the uh, file system on there we're gonna go ahead and let it format we'll um, choose to use this for our boot partition okay that's one of the keys to this whole installation we're gonna hit done okay now we're gonna go over here to the uh, flash drive we're gonna hit enter yes okay now it's free space we hit, highlight the free space and hit enter. We're going to create a new partition. We'll use all of the available space, so the default is all of it. We'll hit enter again. We're going to make this one a logical partition, so keep that in mind. This is a little bit important. Okay, now uh, the formatting scheme for this guy is going to be a little uh, out of the ordinary. We're going to choose physical volume for encryption. Okay, so we hit enter. Okay, and then look here, we've got all of these defaults that are going to be fine. Uh, this is a great encryption scheme, it's very secure. And then we hit done. Okay, now the next thing that we need to do after that, uh, you can see it says crypto not active. We want to configure encrypted volumes. Okay, we hit enter. And we're going to choose yes here. It's going to write the partitioning schemes out. So we hit that. Okay, so uh, as it's uh, formatting, uh, it's, it's preparing the internal solid state drive, at this step it's also going to choose this point to go ahead and format that uh, flash drive that we uh, set up as well. They'll notice that during the Debian installation there are a few points where it needs to write changes, and this is one of them. It might take a few minutes. So while this is going on, I'll talk a little bit about the passwords again. You know, uh, I set a password. I, first of all, I enable the root account. I like to do that. And uh, I put a password on there. It wasn't really long. It was a good password. Um, and then I went ahead and put in, uh, the same password on the user account. You can put a different one if you want. But just remember, because of this encrypted drive, when the machine boots, Every time it boots, you're going to have to enter the encryption key, which you know is going to be a passphrase, which we're about to uh, create in the next step. And this is going to be really long and hard to guess. It's going to have high entropy. So uh, anybody that wants to get on your machine is going to be, uh, most of the time, <laughs> all of the time, they're going to be stopped by this uh, hard drive encryption. So once you get that password entered it may not be necessary to even have any passwords at all in the user accounts but i chose to put them on there okay now when we uh okay we're done here so we finish and after we click finish uh it wants to know if we're going to erase it yes we are going to erase it okay this is the step that might take a while Okay, uh, so as you can see here, this step may be skipped by canceling this action, albeit at the expense of a slight reduction in the quality of the encryption. Okay, now uh, this step too, you'll notice uh, 
it could take hours, maybe even 24 hours on a regular hard drive. But when you use a, a solid state drive, it goes a lot quicker, okay? So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here while this goes, I may be a, a little bit longer just so you'll get the feel of exactly how long this is gonna take. It's at 3% now, it's ticking a percent every four or five seconds. So gosh, I'm not into to math right now, but I would say 20 to 30 minutes, maybe less than an hour for sure uh, to go ahead and run the initial formatting of the encrypted drive and I highly recommend that you know uh, this is gonna make the drive uh, forensically very secure so let's say someone steals this laptop at the airport or whatever and then they take it and they're trying to get access to your information that you have on here they're not going to be able to do it because of the way that you formatted this if you choose not to format this disk and you've had it in there before using it for something else there's going to be trace amounts of data that can be gleaned off of that hard drive so this gives it a real secure foundation wow okay guys so once again i'm going to go ahead and sign off here um we'll do a part two to finish up the installation uh, stay with me. I hope you like these videos. I'm giving you a real secure system here. So I highly recommend you move on to the next video to complete your installation. And uh, I'll walk you through it from head to toe. And then when we're done with the installation, there'll be more videos on how to get your fully secure system set up. So, uh, you know, we're going to get a VPN. We're going to get Tor. We're going to get a virtual box and then we're going to install the Hunix system. We're going to make, uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. So I hope you liked the video. Uh, give me a like or subscribe and uh, I hope to see you next time. Thanks again.